Good morning, this is Ben AI6YR and I just wanted to put together a short video on hydroponics and uh, I use hydroponics for growing uh, tomatoes and peppers and other vegetables in the backyard and I just thought it'd be fun for folks to hear how that works. Um, I started doing hydroponics actually just last year and the reason why is because I had a few gophers uh, come up and eat all of my plants so I uh, decided to see how it would work if I did it out of the ground where it was um, somewhat gopher proof. So uh, here is a hydroponic setup and I'll explain a little bit about what I've got here. So the first thing about hydroponics is you are growing plants not in soil but in a combination of water and fertilizer. Uh, this is an example of what you might do. This is a five gallon bucket and a lid with a hole that's been drilled inside uh, so I can put a plant through. Uh, this is the pe uh, this is a pepper which I started and I'll show the inside of that and it's in a little basket and uh, uh, basically you uh, fill up your five gallon uh, container there's the roots by the way and you uh, mix in the appropriate amounts of fertilizer and you let it sit in there and what happens this is called the crack key method is the plant grows and through the season it actually draws as much um, uh, nutrition as it needs from that water and that fertilizer and it, it actually draws down that reservoir and uh, eventually it uh, runs out but in the meantime the roots develop and there's a combination of roots for air and roots for nutrients and that is the crack key method the beauty of that it doesn't require power there's no pumps in here there's no filters there's no circulation it's just sitting in the pot the whole time and growing uh, it's very easy so with the uh, crack key method, um, there's, there's a couple ways to do it. I've tried this a few different ways. Uh, one is I had uh, a little bit of this material, which is uh, actually uh, insulation for pipes, and actually put the plant uh, by the stem. And that worked great for small plants. It doesn't work so great for tomatoes. Um, the more traditional way is to use a cup, something like this. And uh, you can see it like this, where you fill it with, uh, this is hydrogen over there on the left, which is expanded clay pebbles. Um, you can also fill it with gravel, you can fill it with all sorts of things. Uh, there's a lot of different options, you don't have to do it one, one way or another. So uh, the fertilizer mix that uh, I use, uh, and there's a lot of different varieties, is called Master Blend. And uh, this comes in, uh, it actually has three parts to it. One is, this is the uh, 41838 vegetable formula, which um, I repackaged into something easier to use. And then here is... Here is uh, calcium nitrate, and uh, that is another component for nitrogen. And these are actually Epsom salts. Epsom salts have magnesium in them, and uh, open that up. Same stuff you can buy at the drugstore. So it, it turns out the proportions that I use uh, uses a teaspoon. Here's a, a plastic spoon. In some videos, you'll see people are doing you know things with the uh, with scales and very care careful measurements and I just kind of eyeball it and it seems to work fine. So uh, in this case for, f for the uh, five gallon buckets I have two teaspoons of the uh, 41836 vegetable formula, two of the calcium nitrate and one of the Epsom salts and you just mix it in and uh, throw, uh, throw that in there and you've got a full season's worth of nutrition. Now on tomatoes I find I have to refill these buckets because they start uh, 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 taking a lot of nutrients and need to be refilled so you you only fill them for me I just fill them to half and keep them at half uh, there's a lot of fancy stuff you can do to, to auto fill them and all that and I don't bother I just check them every couple days and make sure they're full to the same place so a couple of things that are important one is uh, the bucket does need to be um, dark on the outside this is a Lowe's bucket that's already blue um, you may also want to paint it um, but you can use other buckets as long as you paint the sides. And the reason why is you don't want to grow uh, algae in there. If you have light in there, then the algae goes in and the plant can't grow. It gets on the roots and it uh, takes all the oxygen and, and causes other issues. So you need to have a dark container. Uh, it doesn't have to be a Lowe's bucket. In fact, I'll show you some of my others where I've just painted them with whatever paint I have. So here's another example, um, which is a Home Depot bucket. Normally they're orange and uh, I've just painted them uh, opaque using whatever paint I had. In this case, it was black and brown paint. The main thing again is you just want it to be opaque so that the sunlight doesn't get in and you don't get algae growing. 
Now the uh, lids you can paint. In this case, uh, this was an experiment I started last uh, year, which I had covered with uh, attic insulation. Uh, paint works perfectly fine as well, and this just happened to be what I was trying out uh, at the time. So here's an example of a different kind of system. Uh, you can actually put these in pipes. These are drain pipes that I salvaged off my neighbor's uh, uh, curb when they had, uh, had a project. They didn't need this anymore. And uh, this works okay for greens, but I haven't found it works very well for tomatoes. And uh, uh, this is, you know, drain pipe sealed up at either end and uh, holes drilled in the middle. And this is what they look like, the vegetables look like here. And there's the roots right there. Right there. Now this is complete overkill. I've actually taken a 35 uh, gallon barrel and drilled a hole in the top. And this is also full of fluid, and that is a zucchini, um, like so. And uh, you don't need to do this, but I just thought it'd be fun to make a giant zucchini if possible. Oh, I wonder what's going on there. Hey, hello. Um, and that's what the, well, I can't quite see it there. I've got all sorts of stuff there, but see the roots hiding down there. And that'll fill the entire barrel at some point. So this is a mini greenhouse I've got running, and uh, that is a tomato, uh, two tomatoes and two peppers, and I've got that in a much larger container. That's a, I believe it's a 19 or 20 gallon uh, container, which I also painted dark so that uh, no algae gets in there. And uh, uh, of course, this is a greenhouse. This one's growing a lot, lot faster. Uh, you'll notice there are uh, runners on that uh, tomato to the left, and I'm gonna pinch those off and make those into new uh, tomato plants. Uh, that's one advantage of hydroponics is you can take and clone plants very easily by uh, pinching off the runners and putting those runners in hydroponic fluid. And so I probably have another one, two, three, four, five, six tomato plants um, that I can make off that one on the left right now. And I'll probably do that in a couple of days. Now I just want to show that I've got these three peppers in one one uh, five gallon bucket and you can do that for certain plants uh, tomatoes i wouldn't recommend because they take so much fluid but uh, other things like greens uh, you can actually put in smaller containers and here the peppers do pretty uh, pretty well in in threes and these peppers can also be cloned so let me just show you what the bottom of this looks like so that is the bottom of the peppers and those roots are growing nicely and again, that's the same hydroponic fluid that I'm using for the tom tomatoes. Anyway, I hope this video has been useful to you if you're thinking about doing hydroponics. Uh, again, the method I'm using is Kratky, K-R-A-T-K-Y, Kratky method. And you can look up more information on the internet. Uh, this has been AI6Wire73.